click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the Fisher projection formula and now in this topic we are going to talk about the Hauer projection formula for the monosaccharides. So what are the differences and how basically it is very much easy to write the structure. This is what I am going to talk about in this topic. So now let's get started. <music> So friends, in this topic, I'm going to talk about the rules to give the Hauer's projection formula of a monosaccharide from the Fisher projection formula. So for that, we have to that is follow certain rules and those are that is according to the cyclic structure in Hauer's projection formula, the ring is depicted as flat, but in actual practice, it is not flat. But let me give you an example so that I could make you understand that is how to write the Hauer's projection formula from a Fisher's projection formula. And the second one is that is the substance which are to the right in the Fisher projection formula are down in the Hauer projection formula. So here we see this is the most important part. That is the substance which are to the right in the Fisher projection formula while writing in terms of in Hauer projection formula we have to write it that is down. So this is all the points that is I am going to cover. So now let us understand this one and now let me talk about the next one also. The next one is suppose if the substance which are on the left of the Fisher position formula. So in that case, while writing the structure in the form of a Howard position formula, we have to write it up. So these are the two main points that is what we have discussed. And now let me talk about the last point that is the oxygen atom occupies the upper right hand corner and the terminal that is CH2OH group is always placed above the plane of the hexagon ring. So this all four points is what I could explain you with the help of an example. So now let me allow to give you the example so that I could make you understand that is how we can write the Howard projection formula from the Fisher projection formula. So in that case, we also understand that as uh, suppose if we talk about the enantiomers, that is one is one is D form and the other one is that is L form. So based on that, let me give you an example of both so that we could understand that is how to write the Howard projection formula. So now let me give you an example related to the glucose. So friends, this is an example. Suppose if I'm talking about that is D glucose. So in that case, I could see that is the substance that are on the right hand side. Those are OH, H, OH and OH. So in that case, let me give you an idea that is how we can give the hot position formula. So here I'm talking about directly, but in my future lecture, I'm going to talk about that is how we can convert the D glucose into a Hauer projection formula. But now let me give you a brief idea that is how we can write the Hauer projection formula. So therefore it consists of a cyclic structure and the cyclic structure where we can find that is oxygen is at the upper right position. So this is the oxygen and it consists of that is six carbon atoms over here. So therefore this is what I'm talking about. So this is the carbon number one. So now let me name it. So therefore this is carbon number one. This would be carbon number two, three, this will be 4, this will be 5 and on the 5th carbon atom there is that is CH2OH and this CH2OH should be on the side where we can find the oxygen so that's the reason it is on the upper side and uh, talking about the carbon atom that is this is carbon number 1 so that means this is the carbon number 1 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 but this is also known as anomeric carbon atom but this carbon is known as anomeric carbon atom because this carbon atom where we could find the OH which is upper side or the lower side because we have discussed the point number 2 and point number 3 where we have got to know that is if the OH is on the right hand side we have to represent it towards the downward form and in that case this anomeric suppose if this anomeric carbon if it has the OH on the upper side it would be called as beta for D glucose and if it is in downward position it will be called as that is alpha so therefore this is carbon number one two three four five and six so in that case this carbon number one is basically known as anomeric carbon atom and it will decide whether this is which configuration that is alpha or beta but now let me discuss about the second carbon atom so in this case the second carbon atom where we can find that is the oh is on the right hand side so that's the reason we have to represent the oh in the downward direction so therefore this is the oh and the one which is left out that is in the left side that is hydrogen that will be on the upper side so therefore this was carbon number two and now talking about the carbon number three where we can find that is H on the right hand side so that's the reason we will represent H down and OH on upper side one valency that is being left out is hydrogen 
so this is the direct formula that is i'm writing but uh, we have a different lecture in the future so that we could understand that's how we can write the structure so now here we see the carbon number one is there so this is known as anomeric carbon atom and this anomeric carbon atom will decide whether it is alpha form or whether it is a beta form so it has been found that is suppose if we write the oh downward and the h upward then this would be called as alpha form or in this case i am talking about that is alpha d glucopyranose and in this case if all the carbon atoms have that is the position the same position that is suppose if on the fourth carbon atom suppose if the hydrogen is over here and the oh is downward every carbon if i am talking about except this carbon that is known as anomeric carbon atom and in this case suppose if the oh is upward and the h is downward then in that case it would be called as beta d glucopyranose so this was related something to d glucose and now let me give an example of l glucose so friends this is a structure that is what we have and this is known as l glucose and this is a fisher position formula and for that suppose if we have to write in hoth position formula so the criteria is same like the previous one so that is at the extreme right that is upper right we could get that is oxygen atom we have to represent and talk about the other valencies that is so this is carbon number one two three four five and six so for that we have to number it here also that is this is carbon number one two three four this is the fifth carbon atom and to which basically there will be ch2oh on the side where the oxygen is present so now let me discuss about the second carbon atom over here so therefore this is second carbon third fourth fifth and this is sixth so second carbon atom has that is h on the right hand side so in terms of the hot position formula we have to write it downward and here there will be oh on the third carbon atom we could find that is the oh on the right hand side so in that case here it will be downward the h will be upward so this is the fourth one where we could find that is the h is on the right hand side so here basically the h will be that is downward and here there is oh on the fifth carbon atom this is the fifth carbon atom which consists of ch2oh also as well as the only one valency left that could be filled by hydrogen so the carbon number one is basically known as anomeric carbon atom and in that case basically it will decide whether it is an alpha form or beta form so suppose here if we find that is the oh is on the upward direction and h that is oh that means hydroxyl is on the upper direction and h is downward then in case of l glucose suppose we have to convert the l glucose fisher position formula to half position formula so in that case it would be called as alpha l glucopyranose and in that case suppose if the oh is downward and h is upward while we'll talking about the other valencies and the other configuration so suppose the position of the oh and h is the same then that would be called as that is beta l glucopyranose so if we compare it with d glucose and l glucose about the hot position formula we could get that is here for the anomeric carbon atom if the oh is present downward for the d glucose it would be called as alpha and for OH which is upward in case of L-glucose it would be called as alpha so that is the vice versa that is what we could find over here that is suppose if we talk about the OH which is present upward in the D-glucose that would be called as beta but in this case the OH suppose if it is present downward then in that case it would be called as beta so therefore this was nothing but the Hoth position formula and this is the most important part that we have to discuss in the future lecture and that's it for now so thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have enjoyed this video and you have understood this video very clearly and I hope I'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much